Hi, today's video is a time lapse of me building this letter W for 36 days of type. So what I've done here is sped up the playback of me building this W and then at certain points I'll pause or I'll slow down the video to kind of explain what I'm doing at um, certain critical points. Um, let me know in the comments below if you find this useful and please remember to like and subscribe for more. Okay, let's get started. So what I'm doing here is I've just brought in a letter W and I'm just using that as a guide to lay out my pieces. So I'm first kind of lining up where I want my hinges to be and uh, then I'll just do one side and then when I've got one side correct then I'll flip the whole thing and, uh, and have it for the other side. Here I'm now just um, parenting each of the objects to each other so it kind of makes sense in a chain uh, so I can then create the IK chain and I do that by going to character commands and create IK chain with the first and last part of that chain selected that will then create this goal object that we can uh, use to control the endpoint and move that around What's important here is to freeze a transformation on your null point uh, that resets the the uh, X, Y, and Z, and means that it, once you move it around, if you lose your position, you can always reset PSR, and it will go back to its original position. So I wanted the arms in between the hinges to kind of have these cut out circles so they would slide around the hinge sections. So to do that I duplicated the parts and then cut them out using the volume builder and volume mesher. Now once I had those I um, actually created instances of them because I wanted the, to put them back into the hierarchy and if I had them in the volume builder and volume mesher and put them back into the hierarchy obviously that, that is already a folder in itself. So if I make it an instance, then I can um, layer it up within um, the, the file system so it still works, so everything still works as it should. And it also means each of the pieces is still editable down the line if I want to change anything. Here again I'm using the volume builder volume mesher to just put some more detail into those hinges and then make an instance of it and the advantage of making it into an instance is that I can use the same object multiple times and make changes to that one and it will carry across everything. So this is the point where I've just duplicated the whole setup that I've done for the right arm and now making the left arm. And you might have to make sure obviously you duplicate that with the goal objects as well so we can move those around. And then within the hierarchy for the left arm, I just hidden the objects that are duplicated like the, um, the, the central hinge. 
see the right and the left arm that are kind of bumping into each other, they're crossing over, so I'm cutting out holes of some objects and uh, making some objects thinner, so everything kind of fits together like a jigsaw puzzle. I set up my own goal object for the center hinge. Um, I then create uh, a few more um, nulls based on those original ones and I'm using those um, to actually create the motion and what I've done here is just change the way they're displayed. I've made them a, a, a larger circle so I can control them easier and the reason I've done that is because on each of the original nulls I'm putting a constraint tag, a character constraint tag and that is constrained to the um, the new null that I've created and then I'm using the spring constraint so that as I move that top null um, I can then have some like bouncy motion on it and which you have a little bit of control over and it gives you some nice secondary motion. Here I'm just updating the arms so they have more detail in them. opened up a scene of one of my previous uh, 36 days of type and I'm just using the background stage, the lighting and the camera so I've got the same angle and setup so it looks like it's part of the same set. The main coloured materials are pretty simple setup, just glossy materials with a roughness channel and then in that roughness channel I'm actually bringing in a gradient and I'm using the gradient just to kind of crunch the levels of the, um, of the roughness so we can get some more contrast in there. And after that point I'm just playing around with colours.
Okay, so here's the final render. I changed one thing after I actually recorded all of this, which was I changed the main part of the animation rather than the uh, everything kind of moving up and then down. I changed it so everything just moves in and out and just the middle part goes up and down. I just thought that looked cleaner. Um, if you like this, please remember to like and subscribe and uh, my next video will be a full tutorial. Okay, I'll see you soon. Keep safe. Bye.